Dulcie first teed off at the club in 1941. Since then, she's seen it prosper and the game has become part of her life. It's just a tremendous sport that if anybody takes it up, uh, they can get a lot of enjoyment out of it. After years of club competition, fundraising and social events, what she enjoys most is a quiet round with close friends. Dulcie, what's your fondest memory of 50 years here at the club? The friendship. The friendship amongst the ladies and the kindnesses bestowed on everybody. If there's anybody sick, they're the first there to help with a helping hand or anybody in trouble. Many of those friends hosted an afternoon tea party for Dulcie, presenting her with a cake, flowers and a silver goblet. Wednesdays are traditionally ladies' days at the course, but Fridays hold a special significance for Dulcie. When Friday comes and the weather's bad, it's too hot, which I don't play in heat over 30, uh, I, uh, I'm cranky as a bear on a Friday because I can't come out and play in the chook run with my friends. <laughs> Ashley Gordon was savouring the good news today, relieved that the New South Wales Rugby League judiciary had found him not guilty of making a late head-high tackle on Balmain's Gary Freeman. We went into the uh, judiciary feeling it a little confident, but with our decisions like that you don't know which way they're going to go with the judiciary, with the way they're thinking. Any other decision would have caused a sensation. Many thought referee Bill Harrigan overreacted by sending the mild-mannered winger from the field and it took all the Knights' trademark courage to come back and snatch the win a man down. The club has decided to let the matter rest and Gordon agrees with the move. At the time it only happened in like a uh, one or two seconds so it happened pretty quick so the referee was in a situation where he had to make a, a pretty quick decision so really you can't fault him. Had they lost, it may have been a different story, but all thoughts are now on next Wednesday night when the Knights good form is put to the test against Brisbane in the Challenge Cup quarter-finals. Well the two wins, as you know, have been really close ones, but we've, we've come up with the win. And to go in with Brisbane, a hard game, but i um, looking forward to it. Alderman Rigby strenuously opposed the presence of the peace camp in Civic Park during a council meeting last night. Today he took his complaints in person to the peace forum. On Saturday we'll have eight or nine weddings in this park and they'll be all in here getting their photos taken. It'd be lovely if they got this in the background, wouldn't it? But our community services department has put this up for our protection because so Look, that we won't get skin cancer. Look, you're hiding behind things. You're, you, know, you know that that looks no. horrible. Just go out there and stand and have a look at the we're, joint. We're not hiding behind not things, we're standing you up for You keep hiding peace. behind this thing that the council said we can do this at the no, council. We are, we are. We're really obedient. Do. That's yes. right. Yes. And what I say is we don't want that, or I don't want, not we, I don't want that tent in this park or in any other park. The Alderman says he is not opposed to the peace message, just to the way it's being presented. However, when it comes to peaceful resolution of conflict through compromise, it appears neither side is prepared to budge. I don't believe that Alderman Rigby um, has any designs that he will find satisfactory. I don't believe he wants us in the park. The peace protesters have been granted a licence by council to take their message to the park and this is subject to a weekly review. Their long-term future is in the hands of council, but even Alderman Rigby concedes that the prospects of them being evicted are remote. Tom Hilston, NBN News. Throsby Creek is regarded as an environmental black spot, an easy dumping ground for waste and garbage. Environmentally the children can't use it, the dogs can't use it, the people can't use it, it smells. Helping to clean the air, a $7,000 cheque from Landcare, the first in a series of donations over the next three years for the first city-based Landcare group.
And we must care for the land, whether it's in the country or the city. And in fact, the intensities of development uh, mean that there's much higher pressures uh, on land in the urban areas. Local residents have been campaigning for eight years for government support, a battle which led to this 300-page study highlighting environmental concerns. The land care funds will be used for clean-up days, tree planting and education projects. Rising from the waters, Murky Troy, the Throsby Creek land care mascot. Murky will teach children in the area of the importance of caring for the land. Highway Patrol Police and RTA inspectors routinely work side by side, especially during enforcement campaigns aimed at heavy vehicles. Now the two groups want to merge many of their duties to avoid wasted resources. Senior Highway Patrol Police revealed the plan at a meeting at Nelson Bay this morning where they reviewed the past 12 months. The road toll in the region from Sydney to Queensland continues to drop and is more than 20% lower than the previous year. Police say they'll be using familiar tactics this year targeting drink driving, speeding and seatbelt offences. New technology will also come into play in March, including photo recording devices at traffic lights and on radar traps. Well the speed cameras are attached to the uh, radar unit and of course if a, an offending motor is going past so they photograph the car and the time and the date will be put on a photo and uh, the car is identified and the infringement sent out to the, the driver. But a key tactic in freeing up Highway Patrol Police for more enforcements will be the merging of duties with the Roads and Traffic Authority. The RTA will join police in more road safety campaigns, including the use of highway billboards. They'll also conduct more detailed inquiries into the causes of road accidents and in at least one case, take over police duties such as escorting wide loads. And I feel it's a job that certainly that someone else should be doing and our police should be put back out in the roads where they where they should be. RTA traffic safety expert Ben Dalton says the authority will progressively become involved in a broad spectrum of police duties. Just about every single thing that the police have been doing by themselves in the past and we've been doing separately, um, we are now combining and we have in fact produced a joint program to, to, to work together. The state government committed $5 million to the clean-up and development of the state dockyard site in 1989, believing it would be used to carry out part of the frigate work. But when the federal government chose the Melbourne bid over Newcastle's, clean-up work at the site came to an abrupt halt. What's left now is an eyesore, visible from the foreshore and most vantage points in the city. Now they started, they stripped all the buildings and then they stopped. And for over two years it's just stood derelict, rusting away in sight of everybody in the city. It's not good enough. Public Works own the site and according to Peter Chapelo of the Hunter Economic Development Council, work should recommence within the next few months once negotiations over a land swap with the Maritime Services Board are sorted out. The MSB is giving Public Works the Lee Wharf site to complement the Honeysuckle redevelopment, while the dockyard will become the centre for commercial shipping. However, the fact remains the site is unsightly and keeping in mind government procrastination, it could be many months before the site is fully cleared. Eighteen footers have been around since the turn of the century and have undergone some radical redesign over the years. One thing that hasn't changed is their pure thoroughbred pedigree, maintaining their ability to excite their crews and spectators alike. Today, as a prelude to the weekend's racing, Nova Castrians were able to experience firsthand the thrill of sailing an 18-footer. Oh, it was re really enjoyable, yeah. It was the, uh, got out in the trapeze and uh, it's really exciting, yeah. Oh, it was magic. It's the first time I've ever been on an 18-footer and, and, uh, and not been a very experienced sailor. It was a lot of fun. Big thrill. It's part of the razzle-dazzle that surrounds these speed machines and enables the public to witness firsthand the intricate workings of the boats. 
Newcastle is the last event of the national circuit and the format for each each event is that we have this this day to get people you know familiar with the, with the way the boats go and of course we're going to see some fabulous racing here on the weekend that's right Friday Saturday and Sunday it should all be centered in the middle of the harbor so people should come down and have a look This is the document which will guide the development of the Hunter region during the next 20 years. It outlines the region's strengths, weaknesses and its potential. According to the document, to encourage future investment in the region, there needs to be a sound infrastructure base. And that means upgrading the port of Newcastle and Williamtown Airport. Firstly, the upgrading of the port. And when I say upgrading, I mean to diversify the port into things other than coal so that it starts to generate business activity in imports and exports of a range of products. Secondly is the Williamtown Airport. I think that's very important, as the Minister said, because you can't really have a successful region without a good transport system coming into it. Another weakness identified in the report and one which is already being tackled by Newcastle Council and the government is the need to revitalise the CBD. In line with this is the redevelopment of the Honeysuckle Goods Yard site. However, the report has found that many private and public sector decisions in regard to the city are made outside the region, leaving no local input. Once the necessary infrastructure is in place, the report says businesses will find it far more attractive to invest in the region. So we're suggesting that uh, adding value and improving the technology in industries that we're already in should be the emphasis. Well, steel, coal, electricity generation, aluminium. These are the main ones. But while it's fine to stress to the community and the government what's needed in the region, it remains to be seen whether anything will be done. Even this document points out the lack of attention paid to the hunter by the state government, particularly in the area of capital works. For uh, decades, uh, there has been less of a focus on the opportunities for the hunter region. What I hope to see arising out of this particular document is that the community generally, as well as government, focuses again its attention on the opportunities up here. Bob Brewer from Raymond Terrace and Belmont's Don McEwen have been fighting bumper to boot over four rounds of the series, with Brewer edging ahead by two points. And Brewer got into trouble and Bauer Baker's in trouble right in front of the lot of them. There's no room for error in the big Camaros and with extra competition from top drivers like Cessnock's Ron Pine and Aussie champ John Pine, it'll be pressure cooker racing. I'll be driving to win. Right, you know, you've got this Ron Pine here behind you, he keeps you honest, you know, and, and John's out there. Uh, you've got to just absolutely go flat out. Street stock sedans, modified rods and stack em up stock cars are also on the program. The jockey clubbers had to ballot seven horses from the field, leaving 17 runners in the $150,000 event over 1,400 metres. From the planet heads the weights with 56 kilograms, along with Liverstone Elaine, and if the latter can reproduce this form, he'll take a power of beating. Liverstone Elaine has dashed away in the Sadapa colours. Liverstone Elaine is careering away with the FAA Gosford Gold Cup, and Liverstone Elaine bolts in. 89 Caulfield Guineas winner Prokel Haram, Spot the Rock, Ricochet Rosie, Prince Trialia and Post Elect will throw out big challenges and last year's winner Comrade won't pass up the crown of champion easily. Comrade in front, right down the outside, they're coming from all over the shop but Comrade, Comrade's in front and takes out the... The new market is the second $150,000 race of the carnival with a Coca-Cola Butler's Classic to be run on Tuesday with another outstanding field nominated.
And while the big kids fight for placings at the national championships, organisers had their hands full trying to control 1,400 little athletes taking part in the Northern New South Wales regional country titles at Macquarie Field, Spears Point. They have gathered for the two-day carnival from Morisset to the Queensland border and all points between and west to Burke, Moree and Gunnedah. The competitors range in age from under 8 to under 15 and have qualified for these games by finishing in the top three at their respective zone carnivals. And if they finish in the top three at these titles, they will go on to the state championships. Running events played a big part of today's proceedings as well as the field events and the local club Macquarie Shores are confident of repeating last year's carnival victory. Mr Collins was in Newcastle to launch the state's first comprehensive AIDS education seminar for health workers. 60 delegates from across the state will spend the next four days discussing the latest protection and prevention techniques. This seminar is quite crucial for the whole state in that it will, I think, get the message out fairly quickly. If we've got the trainers trained, then we can take this uh, program right out into the hospitals. The seminar couldn't have been more timely. The latest health department figures show a possible increase in the number of sufferers and a surprising change in the way many are contracting the virus. Heterosexual activity has now been blamed for more than 300 diagnosed AIDS cases, while intravenous drug use, traditionally considered second only to homosexual activity in terms of risk, is the sole cause of just 237 cases. Mr Collins says it's obvious the safe sex message still hasn't hit home. For those who haven't heeded the warning, uh, regrettably far too many people have contracted AIDS through heterosexual activity. What people have got to realise is uh, they have to adopt safe sex practices. They have to heed the warning, they have to take precautions. Otherwise there is a risk there, it's a very real risk. The seminar will continue for the rest of the week. Bruce McKenzie, NBN News. Work began last November and already construction is well underway. The new buildings will offer 8,600 square metres of extra floor space and 100 new beds to adjoin the current 50-bed hospital. The additional two theatres, uh, a much improved accident emergency service, many of the services that have not been available here that they've had to travel to Gosford and to Belmont and elsewhere will be now provided and it'll be a great boost to the uh, community generally on the central coast. By this time next year, the hospital will be able to offer for the first time surgical and obstetric services, including new family birthing suites. In unveiling the foundation plaque, Health Minister Peter Collins said the new facilities are part of a 10-year plan to reallocate health resources to where they are vitally needed. The Central Coast dramatic population explosion has prompted extensions to both Gosford and Wyong hospitals, work that may enable them to achieve teaching hospital status. Rebecca Skinner, NBN News. Today, the staff of Westpac Bank at Lake Haven Shopping Complex at Gorokan were counting the cost of the damage. The automatic alarm went off just after 3 a.m., together with the bank's sprinkler system. Though the fire brigade arrived within five minutes, one of the two automatic tellers was completely destroyed. The safe containing cash remained intact. But what we found out, uh, purely an arson attempt, where uh, vandals, we think, have come and taken paperwork from the depository bins and sat on top of the handybag machine and just purely set a lie to it. Whether it was an attempt for uh, robbery, we're not sure. Um, it was unsuccessful if it was. Though the fire was confined to this $50,000 teller, damage was widespread. Besides a lot of inconvenience and time, um, somewhere in the vicinity of $400,000 we're anticipating, yet to be fully assessed, mainly in hardware from computer systems and furnishings and fittings, everything's completely wrecked inside. The branch will remain closed for the rest of the week.
Four generations of family united at Killarney Vale Nursing Home to give their birthday greetings. Represented by the traditional messages of goodwill were Queen Elizabeth, Governor-General Bill Hayden, Prime Minister Bob Hawke and Premier Nick Greiner. One of Australia's early pioneers, Mrs Pinkham, who was born at Port Pirie, married a Broken Hill miner and had seven children. But she was widowed early, supporting her young family by working in a Chinese laundry. Since then, the family has grown to include four grandchildren, eight great-grandchildren and five great-great-grandchildren. Today was an opportunity for those relations to mark the occasion with 106 pink roses and to indulge Mrs Pinkham with her favourite things, birthday cake, music and fond memories. The advance came as shells from the howitzers howled their way onto enemy positions. Saudi tanks leading the charge, smashing their way through the sand barriers built by the Iraqis, and then spreading out to take on the army they'd waited months to fight. We will fight him, we will kill him, we will destroy his uh, army. The advance went like clockwork, the Iraqis leaving the signs of war behind as they retreated. The first resistance not coming until the Allies were 30 kilometres into Kuwait. But after a brief battle, this was the result. A white flag flying above the Iraqi foxholes, the Saudi troops moving in to make sure no one was hiding out. They captured dozens of Iraqis, some clutching Allied surrender leaflets, some slightly wounded, and at least one obviously pleased his fighting days were over. The Iraqis was, uh, most of them was very nice people, but the uh, little of them, uh, they said to us, there is no guns with them, there is no bomb, there is nothing with them. On another front, the US Marines were pushing ahead. The road to liberation was littered with enemy armor, Saddam's army pulling out without even lighting the oil trenches designed to hamper the attack. With specialized Allied weapons clearing a path through Iraqi minefields, convoys poured into Kuwait at will. And in the distance, they witnessed a remarkable sight, the surrender of hundreds of enemy soldiers hurrying across the horizon with hands on heads, a burning oil well in the background. They were later brought back to the huge complex of prisoner of war camps in eastern Saudi Arabia. The retaking of Kuwait involved attacks by sea, air and land. Army paratroopers dropped in behind enemy lines. Helicopters attacked Iraqi bunker positions. The Iraqis were surprised and overwhelmed. This first day of the ground war has gone better than anyone could have dared predicted. General Schwarzkopf said the Allied casualties were extremely light. Light, that is, for war. But that still meant at least 11 US soldiers killed in the first hours of the fighting. The troops are doing a great job, but I would not be honest with you if I didn't remind you that this is the very early stages. Has the, uh, uh, had the, the resistance been light because the Iraqis are, are retreating or are they simply not engaging you? Uh, are they surrendering? I mean, what exactly are they doing? All of the above. General, 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 uh, you say the opposition is light. Is this because you have avoided a frontal confrontation with them? Are you going around or over? And is that why there's little We're opposition? We're going to go around, over, through, on top, underneath, and any other way. How do you go as the Allies continued their uncompromising advance on Kuwait, there were many lucky escapes. This US Marine unhurt after his vehicle veered off course and hit a mine. I think I was unconscious, the next thing I knew I was running, and I just fell down on the deck and my head was hurting extremely. Other soldiers too spoke about how they were wounded. They didn't fight too hard, you know, they tried to put down a high degree of fire on us and we returned that high degree of fire and, and overwhelmed them. And I thought I was dead. Really? Yeah. But, uh, cause like, you know, it's like a hit right in the head right here. At sea, warships moved closer to the Kuwaiti coast, destroyers and frigates from the British and American battle groups escorting the Missouri into position so she could turn her big guns onto the Iraqis holding out in Kuwait City. 
There was also tremendous firepower support from the air. British tornado pilots amazed at the speed of the Allied advance. Once we were airborne, we found out on the radio that our target had moved um, a matter of some 10 miles north due to the fact that uh, our own troops were progressing so quickly, uh, moving through enemy lines, that uh, we had to attack another target. The only counter-attack from the Iraqis came in the skies over Saudi Arabia and Israel, intercepting Patriot missiles, scattering the incoming warheads into thousands of pieces. The people of Baghdad seemed to take the increased offensive in their stride. They scurried when the now familiar sound of an approaching air raid sounded, but as usual, most of the talking was being done on Baghdad radio. Saddam Hussein telling his troops to kill with all your might. So far, the Iraqis have shown little of what Saddam is expecting. 